Good morning everyone to a wonderful rainy, uh, not too cold day in Bavaria, Passau, Germany. Here we have the Volkswagen ID3 Pro S and the Volkswagen ID7. Today we're gonna do a little test drive with both with both um, um, do a, a comparison in consumption because those two cars Rico was so nice to come here all the way five hours away he, he stayed at a hotel and then we we met this morning those two cars have the same battery I'm pretty sure the ID7 has an upgraded version of that battery um, the only they both have no heat pump they both have 19 inch wheels on so the only real difference that we have is the motor, this is the 150 kilowatt old motor and this is the 210 kilowatt new motor and the form of course. ID7 is longer but a bit shorter and ID7 is way heavier, 240 kilos heavier. So this will be very interesting. Uh, and by the way, subscribe because I will be getting uh, a Skoda Enyaq soon, the 85 with the new motor and hopefully I can get somehow an old uh, Enyaq so we can have we have the same car just different uh, motor and then we see how efficient the motor is We are on our way, we both charged to 80%. Um, Rico with his ID3 Pro S was done at 80% before me because he started at 30% and then his uh, uh, charging power was higher at 60% when I plugged in. Um, we both have a cold battery, we both didn't get amazing charging power, that's fine. Um, so since it's the same battery, I think we can have a very uh, very much similar charging at when we come back he's in front of me we're driving 130 I have distance on four so we keep the distance um, what he told me which is awesome is that his ID3 Pro S has nothing <laughs> So it's very low equipped, doesn't have a rain sensor. It's a four seat version, two and a half years old with around, what did you say, 70,000 kilometers. Um, no rain sensor, no travel assist, no cruise control, just the speed limiter, uh, which is at 130, as I can see. I um, mean, he's just flooring it. I uh, had it set to 130. No seat heating, I didn't even know that exists. <laughs> um, he has nothing and, and no matrix LED headlights of course awesome <laughs> so he will be even a bit lighter but I don't think it's more that much it's just a few control unit and sensor and stuff maybe 10 kilos lighter than a normal Pro S with a bit of a bit of equipment in there but very interesting uh, excited to see what difference in consumption we get it's raining a tiny bit it's wet on the road like I said we both have 19 inch wheels winter wheels uh, very similar when it comes to form so I think they're also the same consumption so really today we all have set our uh, climate to 21 degrees auto no seat heating everything is set um, I'm already at 74 percent consumption average right now is 345 because first 10 kilometers are uphill that's fine um, really the only difference is motor and form of the car it's very interesting I like it a lot <laughs> I just passed him driving 130 
Uh, my data so far, 244 watt hours per kilometer is my average consumption. I don't know his, we're gonna do this when we turn around in 30 kilometers or so. Drive so far is nice, it's not raining that strong anymore, uh, but it's wet. All good, lights on, safety first. Uh, I'm at 64% by the way. We just turned around, he's back in front of me and we're driving 110. Um, I called him when we turned around, I was at 56%, he was at 54%. My consumption at that time was two, uh, average was 235, his 244. Very, very interesting. It's very close, but I'm a bit better. With the state of charge, we also have to think that he has a, a car with 70,000 kilometers, two and a half years, so there's degradation, and my car is seven weeks old. I'm sure there's already degradation because I drove 5,000 kilometers, but not as much. And that's why we do the charging thing at the end. By the way, with charging, my battery says I could preheat but it's almost at full temperature for good uh, charging power so I guess his battery as well. I just passed him, still driving 110. We are 40 kilometers away from the starting point. I think it's 155, 156 what the ID7 shows. And then we compare there what our average consumption was and how much state of charge he lost on the drive. I'm at 47%. Still six degrees, still wet, but no rain. This video was supported by Maingau Autostrom. With Maingau you can charge at over 500,000 charging stalls all over Europe for a fair price. Check out the link in the description below. I arrived with 37% and 205 watt hours per kilometer. So he arrived with 32% and average consumption 211. I have 156 kilometers, you have 153. Interesting. I have 104, 105 kilowatt, he has 77 kilowatt. Yeah. We had to move chargers because on the other side there are only two chargers with a display as here and one of the chargers was occupied, so we had to go here. Since we drove over here I arrived not with the 37, 35% uh, and he had 31 or so. Yeah, so far apart. <laughs> Why couldn't this charger work here? He's still at only 77 kilowatt. Interesting for me was when we drove off after charging in the beginning, ID7 showed that the battery temperature was perfect for rapid charging. So either it preheated the battery while charging or it, the charging itself preheated the battery to the perfect amount. But then driving with 130, battery cooled down, down and down and then turning around driving 110 even more and now I was like 60% or so of my my graph there. I don't know what that means exactly. <laughs> He's at 64% charges with 63 kilowatt. I'm at 77% almost done charging with 74 kilowatt. I charged almost 75 kilowatt hours. 
If you want to follow me on Instagram, Battery Life One, and if you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below, and here on YouTube, there's channel membership. I am done. 24 minutes for 36.8 kilowatt hours. Oh my god, he's done, and I think it's less. <laughs> it's less than 36.7, I had 36.8. So what did we learn in this video? Um, number one, what's very important is that my ID7 showed 156 kilometers driven and the ID3 showed 153 kilometers driven and the real kilometers are 155 according to Google. So mine showed a kilometer too much and the ID3 showed three kilometer less than it should be, a two kilometers less. That means if I do that with the consumption, you saw it in the numbers, I get to 206.3 watt hours per kilometer for the ID7 and 208.3 for the ID3. And this difference is so small, that's why at the end the kilowatt hours charge was so close. And uh, maybe the ID7 heated up the battery, but I don't know. It could also be since the charging power was higher, there was more charging loss. And that's why it was so close, because again, the consumption is very, just a tiny bit less. Um, and the, the state of charge difference at arrival, 37 to 32%, I'm sure has to do with degradation. Uh, because in this chart, when I uh, calculate this, I only get 68.1 kilowatt hours in the ID3, and my ID7 has 73.9, which I get most of the time around 74 kilowatt hours. At some point, it will be less, but this ID3 was two and a half years old. So when we add all of this up, I think that both had the same consumption, and when we consider, I have to be nice to Hank now, when we consider that the ID7 weighs 240 kilos more, is a gigantic car with a lot of space and uh, the same 19 inch tires, but wider tires, 235, 255 in the rear, and the ID3 had 215 on all four, I think that this uh, result is very good for the ID7 and I'm very happy. <laughs> and by the way, about heating, I had the seat belts for the dog buckled in the rear and in the ID7 that means that the rear is being heated up at the same time as the driver, but the ID3 has only a one zone climate, so you cannot just heat up the driver, the whole car is being heated up the whole time. So this was also by accident very comparable. But that's it for me, thank you very much for watching, have a great day and take care, bye!